Hey man, well it's good to be back on the radio again today. We certainly do appreciate the good Lord allowing us to be able to come to you by means of radio. This is the Barrett Baptist Church broadcast. We certainly are privileged to be the pastor there with the Tim Krantz. And we thank you so much for tuning in to our radio program. If you'd like to know more about our church, you can visit our church website, barrettrailbaptistchurch.com. Also, we have a YouTube and a Facebook page where we upload our sermons uh, weekly on YouTube. Our radio broadcasts we do put on Facebook and YouTube. But on our webpage, there is a sermons audio link uh, for audio files from all of the sermons that are preached here at our church by myself and others. And hopefully that would be a good resource, be a help to you. If you'd like to listen to those sermons, be a blessing. There's also contact information on our website. You can email us directly from our website. I think there's also um, my phone number, I believe, is also on the website. If not, I'll give that to you in just a moment. And you could call and leave us a voicemail, send us a text, and we'll get back in touch with you uh, as quickly as possible. Our church is located at 100 Born Again Lane in Cana, Virginia. That is our physical address as well as our mailing address. My cell phone number is 336-755-7015. You can call and leave us a voicemail, send us a text message, and we'll get in touch with you as quickly as possible. Well, we're continuing in Psalm 42 today. Uh, Psalm 42 is the first psalm in book two of the psalms. It is said to be uh, to the chief musician, masculine. Masculine means that it is, a, it is a psalm of instruction, and it is for the sons of Korah. It is believed that David is the author of the psalm, the human penman. Ultimately, we know that God is the author of all scripture. Ain't that a blessing? Praise the Lord for that. And so it is a psalm. David is bearing his heart. He is having lots of trouble, lots of difficulty, uh, different kinds of situations and afflictions from uh, physical pain as well as outward enemies. And it is also has a lot to say about, I, I love verse number four. He said, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God and with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. And so in the past two broadcasts, we have talked somewhat about uh, the attendance. Uh, we are using that in application to our attendance to the church house, a uh, place to worship together with God's people. And so we've said several things about that in the past two sermons. We're going to move on today. We'll begin in verse number seven of the psalm. That's where we got to. And so we'll pray together and we'll start from there. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to pray. We thank you for the privilege to be on the radio again today. I do ask, Lord, that you would help us and that you would use us to be a help and a blessing to those who are listening uh, today. Use us, Lord, to say things that bring honor and glory to your name and to your word. Help us, Lord, to exalt you and uplift you in a great way. And Father, for all that you do, we'll not fail to thank you. We'll not fail to praise you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in verse number one of Psalm 42, as the heart painteth after the water brook, so painteth my soul after thee, O God. What a blessing it is to have a thirst for the things of the Lord. He said, my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? There's only one living God. So when David specifies that his heart is thirsting after the living God, that excludes all of the man-made gods, for none of those are alive, but we have a living God. He said, my tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember from from therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill of Mizar. Now we made it to verse number seven 
on our broadcast last week, so we'll take up there uh, now. The Bible says in verse number seven, deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. The verse begins with the phrase, deep calleth unto deep. What in the world is the psalmist talking about? Well, I believe he's referring to the previous verse where he said, Oh my God, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. His soul is cast down deep into the jaws of distrust and fear. His soul is cast down deep into the depths of sorrow. Listen, this is the kind of sorrow or this kind of sorrow calls for help from the depths of mercy. Listen, regardless of how deep that David's soul sank in despair, he could never sink deeper than the Lord's mercy. Aren't you glad, friend? You may be listening today. Maybe you seem in your, or, or you think that you're sinking in despair so deep that there's no help. I'm glad, thank God, we can never sink deeper than God's mercy goes. Amen. He said here, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. So David here, the affliction that the psalmist is experiencing was like waves. They, they just kept coming one right after another. In fact, he uses the word billows. Billows are massive waves or, or surge of the sea that are usually kicked up by the wind. And so the indication here is that David's problems were not small. They were not simple. They were complex and they were dangerous and they were rolling. Amen. They just kept Kept coming in like the waves. Now, uh, some examples of that. David had troubles and heartaches. It came in waves and billows. In fact, the Bible says, I'll read this to you, make a few comments uh, in Job chapter 1 and verse number 13. The Bible says that there was a day when the sons, when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, verse 17, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Matt, you talking about trouble coming in like waves and billows. Job knew something about troubles coming in like billows overflowing. Amen. In verses 14 and 15 here in Job chapter 1, the Sabians stole his oxen and his asses and killed his servants that were in charge of their care. In verse number 16, the fire of God fell from heaven and it burned up the sheep and the servants that were over them. The Bible says that they were consumed. In verse 17, the Bible says that three bands of Chaldeans stole Job's camels and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. In verses 18 and 19, the great wind from the wilderness blew and the eldest son's house fell down and it killed all of Job's children. Listen, you talking about utter destruction in your life in one day. I could not imagine 10 children and all of them dead in one day. That's not to mention all of these servants that is made mention of the kind of man that Job was. I would say that he had close friendships among those servants. I would say that those servants were well taken care of, well protected, and greatly loved by their master Job, 
And now all of their ser- all of his servants, except for the few that escaped to uh, bring news to him, are also gone. Listen, the troubles and the trials and the discouragement has came in in waves. Amen. And this is probably this little story that I read in Job chapter one, verses thirteen through nineteen, is probably the greatest Bible explanation for Psalm forty-two and verse number seven that we read where it says, deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Now in this verse, the pronoun thy is used three times. It appears that the trials and the afflictions that David is facing has been placed by there by the Lord, or maybe I should say they have certainly been allowed by the Lord. In other words, what I'm saying is that they were not self-inflicted by David himself, just like Job. And we read there, we know we didn't, we're not doing an exposition on the book of Job, but we know that God has allowed Satan to tempt him. And so these are not self-inflicted things caused by something that Job has done, but God has allowed Satan to try him. And so it seems that God is allowing the enemies of David to try him and to afflict him. Now it makes mention here in this verse, it talks about the deep waters where the floods overflow me, or, or, or it talks about the, the billows and the waves. You know, uh, several times in the Bible, water is used as an analogy for affliction. In Psalm 69, in verse number one, the Bible says, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. That's what we see in Psalm 69, how that the, the trouble, the problem, the afflictions. They are like waters coming in in the soul. He is sinking in a deep mire, a place where there's no standing. He, he said, I am coming to deep waters and the floods overflow me. He has cried so much that he's weary of his crying. His throat is dried from the affliction. Mine eyes fail, he says, while he waits for God. Listen, what, whatever you do, I, I tell you one thing, he, his trouble is great, but you know what he's doing? He is still waiting for God. Listen, friend, do not accept a cheap alternative when trouble comes. You better wait for God to move and deliver you from your situation. In Psalm 88, in verse number one, the psalmist said, O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave. When thou rememberest no more, uh, and they are cut down from thy hand, thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in the darkness, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. And so several times, many times in the Bible, God's affliction and the troubles are likened unto water several times in the Bible. We could read also Psalm 124. And of course, you're probably familiar with Jonah chapter number two, where he is swallowed up by the, the whale or the large fish, if you will. Now, so, so trouble is oftentimes compared to or likened to or explained by the use of trouble and by water and deep waters and waves waves and billows. Now, the Bible says, come back to Psalm 42, Psalm 42, in spite of all of this affliction that David has made mention of, he says in verse number eight of Psalm 42, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. 
Now, I really like the wording of this great verse. In spite of the fact that waves of affliction are rolling in and the billows are overflowing his life, he said, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness. Listen, friend, if you desire to see the loving kindness of God in your life, in spite of the troubles, in spite of the problems, in spite of the afflictions, the loving kindness of God cannot be hid. Amen. In fact, the Bible says here, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. I believe that means so that you and everyone else can see the loving kindness of God in your life in spite of the affliction and in spite of the trouble. I want you to think about this, this great missionary story. One of God's faithful missionaries, his name was Alan Gardner. He experienced many physical difficulties and hardships throughout the service to the Savior. Despite his troubles, he said, while God gives me strength, failure will not daunt me. In 1851, at the age of 57, he died of disease and starvation while serving on Picton Island at the southern tip of South Africa. When his body was found, his diary lay nearby. It bore the record of suffering, hunger, thirst, disease, pain, wounds, and loneliness. His circumstances were horrendous. In spite of that, the last entry in his little book showed the struggle of his shaking hand as he tried to write legibly. What he wrote or what he recorded spoke volumes. This missionary continues to preach today with his final recorded words. This is what he said. I am overwhelmed with a sense of the goodness of God. What do you think about that? No, no word of complaint, no childish whining, no grumbling and complaining at the circumstances he were facing. It was just praise for God's goodness. Here's a man who died alone in starvation and disease and he, his, his circumstances horrendous, a man. He was hungry and thirsty and pain and wounds and loneliness. And yet his last entry in his diary was shaking hands had to do with the fact that I am overwhelmed with the sense of the goodness of God. Now, that brings us back to our verse in Psalm 42 and verse number eight. David says here in this psalm that the problems and the afflictions are rolling in like waves and they're rolling in like billows, if you will. They're coming in one right after another. And yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Listen, friend, in spite of our trials, it is impossible to not see the Lord's blessings in our life. Now, R.W. Barber said this, the Lord's goodness surrounds us at every moment. I walk through it almost with difficulty as through thick grass and flowers. Boy, ain't that the truth? You, you, you will have to be blind as a bat not to see the goodness of God in your life. You may be facing difficulty, and I'm, I am certainly not making light of that. You may be facing troubles and problems that, that seem like they're rolling in like the waves of the sea. But in spite of that, friend, you cannot fail to see the goodness of God in your life. Richard Owen Roberts put it this way, there are no days when God's fountain does not flow. Listen, the Bible says in Romans chapter 2 and verse number 4, the Bible says, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repent us. Listen, friend, do not lose sight of the goodness of God in your life and do not lose sight of the goodness of God towards you in the troubles of your life. I want you to listen to this great poem about God's goodness by John Greenleaf Whittier. This is what it says. I see the wrong that rolled me lie that round me lies. I feel the guilt within. 
I hear with groan and travail cries. The world confess its sin, yet in maddening maze of things and tossed by storm and flood, to one fixed trust my spirit clings. I know that God is good. Amen. What a blessing. I'm glad we serve a good God. Amen. Hey, come back to our Psalm 42, verse number eight. I'll read the entirety of the verse. We'll look at the end of it. It says, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. Listen, friend, do not allow the circumstances in your life to steal your song and cancel your prayer. Listen, I I don't know how to paint a picture any clearer than what David himself has painted in this great Psalm 42. What David has said in this Psalm concerning his situation, he said, but in the night, in the night, in the night, in the night, his song shall be with thee. Listen, many times it is in the night when when we grieve the most. It's quiet. Our mind is off our work and, and our mind is off of the chores of this life and our mind begins to become our enemy. David said that this is the time that he will mingle his song and his prayer. Listen, I know someone else in the Bible who did this very thing when they were going through a difficult time. Hey, you know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 16 and verse number 25, you know what Paul and Silas were doing? They were going through a difficult time. Amen. They had just been beaten and hauled off in the prison, not for sin, not for wickedness, not for ungodliness. They were put there because they were preaching Jesus Christ. And they're sitting there with the stripes on their back and, and the pain in their body and the darkness of the prison and the coldness of the handcuffs and the the tightness of the chains. But for him, while all of this was going on, the Bible said, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Hey, the Psalm of David tells us here in Psalm 42, hey, the problems and the troubles, they're, they're rolling in like the waves roll. But friend, I've still got a song and a prayer in the night season. Listen, the, the, this, this Paul and Silas, they've been thrown into prison and beaten, but instead of complaining, they were praying and singing. Listen, friend, there's a, there's a great example for us here. Whatever the prison in your life may be, you may not be behind metal bars. You may not be in cuffs. But friend, there are many of God's people who are in some type of prison. There's a prison of affliction. There's the prison of disease. Or there's the prison of family trouble. There, there's, a, there's a prison of separation from God. I'm not talking about losing your salvation. I'm talking about a broken fellowship because of sin and this trust and idolatry in our lives. But I am glad that, thank God, if you need deliverance from your prison, whatever your prison may be, why don't you try singing and praying your way out of that dungeon? Listen, you will begin to see the loving kindness of God in the daytime. He'll begin to command it in your life. The end of verse number 40, verse number eight, the Bible says this. Now look, and in the night, in, in the night, his song shall be with me and my prayer unto, look, the God of my life. Now, look, I, I'm not going to spend a great amount of time here. I don't have a lot of time to spend here anyway, but I, I want to ask you this question. What is your life? The psalmist said, the God of my life. Listen, if God is your life, you will soon begin to see things change drastically in your life. Now, verse number nine, the psalmist said, I will say unto God, my rock. Well, the previous verse, he said, the God of my life. Here, he said, God, my rock. And he said this, I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forsaken me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Now, a couple of things. First of all, even though things are not going David's way, God is still his rock. This is important. You can can focus on the negative or you can focus on the fact that God is your rock. Listen, friend, regardless of what you may be going through in your life, if God is your rock, do not 
change foundations. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice today and God is not your rock, I encourage you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and get on the solid rock, amen, uh, that, that is the firm foundation that will not fail and will not sink. Listen, many times over the years, I have witnessed troubles, problems, heartaches, and afflictions in people's lives. And there are some folks who draw much closer to Christ when this happens. And I want to tell you something, friend. That is the intended purpose of the trials, tribulations, troubles, heartaches, and difficulties that we face as a believer. The intent of that is to draw us nearer to the dear Lord Jesus Christ. However, I have seen numerous cases and numerous situations where people turn away from God and they leave that solid foundation that is the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they search for an alternative for their problems and their troubles and their difficulties. And friend, there is no other. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one. Now, notice what he said, verse number nine. I was saying to God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Listen, God is the rock, but he has two more questions for him. And this psalm is, is such a roller coaster. It's up and down, up and down. Now, in Psalm 13, David had a similar situation. Uh, David thinks that God has forgotten him in Psalm 13. In fact, he said this in verse number one, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy heart daily? How, uh, how long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Verse number two, How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Four times in Psalm 13, David asked how long. Now, let me say two things to you quickly. Number one, it's okay to ask God how long. And number two, it's okay to question God about the sorrow that you're facing. However, you must always remember that he is your rock and there isn't another. Now, I don't want to discourage you further, friend, but I'll tell you this. There are some things that will not be solved in our life until we get home with the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, preacher, if that is the case with the trouble that I am facing, what am I going to do? What, how am I going to contend while I'm still here? Well, stop dwelling on what you cannot change. Live and serve God faithfully and he'll take care of the rest in your life. Amen. Look at verse number 10. I got to hurry. As with the sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Now, I believe that this verse uh, it has even more details concerning the severity of David's situation. In fact, he likens the pain to that of a sword being stuck in his bones. Now, I have no idea what that is. And I, uh, what kind of pain that is. And I hope I never know how excruciating that type of pain is. His friends say daily, where is thy God? Now listen, I think that the worst pain that David is feeling was the pain of his enemies defying his God. Now, there's a lot more I'd like to say about that, but I, I want to conclude the Psalm on today's broadcast. Look at verse number 11. Why art thou cast down? O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now, the psalmians with David questioning himself, he asked, why am I cast down and why am I disquieted? Now, our modern day terminology for this type of, of, of problem would be he is having anxiety. David is depressed. He's cast down. He's disquieted. disquieted. He has no peace, no calm or ease. You say, preacher, I have the same, I have the same issues. What is the remedy? The remedy is given in this verse. Place your hope in God. Now listen, listen, whatever it is you're substituting for God is not working. You need to put your faith and your trust in God. He is my life and he is my rock. 
Listen, my time is quickly coming on again today. May God reach, richly bless you until we meet again next time. Good day. All right, thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast on YouTube, Facebook. Thank you so much for that. Please like and share the broadcast if you will. That's the only hope that we have of reaching more people is with your help. Thank you so much. Good day and God bless.